birdwatchers rejoice. The phrase dead as a dodo is about to become as dead as a... Uh, a Texan company, Colossal Biosciences, plan to de-extinct the dodo. Part turkey and part clown shoe, the dodo was last seen waddling around on the island of Mauritius in 1662. The dodo was not scared of human beings. That bird had never seen Britain's Got Talent. And consequently, the theory goes that we just clonked it on the head and ate it into extinction. Go us. The dodo got its name from the Portuguese word duodo, which means fool or simpleton, presumably because every time the dodo went to Nando's, it never tried the peri-peri chips. Dodo. Desisto. It's pronounced dodo, not doo doo. Colossal biosciences need to raise money to raise the dead, and they have succeeded in getting $150 million worth of funding to bring back the ground based bird. Of course, it's their bird of choice. Based in Dallas, we all know that Texans are fond of exotic creatures with feathers and large breasts. When the idea of de extinction crops up, people always think of dinosaurs. And although it's visually more stunning to bring back a velociraptor, it will literally eat your profit margins. Far better for the human race to de-extinct a three foot tall moron. I mean, even if the bird comes back smarter than it was due to the lack of opposable thumbs, I don't think we're going to see Planet of the Dodo anytime soon. Colossal Biosciences plan to rewild the Dodo back onto the island of Mauritius where it was last seen. I'm sure that the Mauritius poultry farmers will be delighted to have a three foot tall waddling bird that can't fly over fences and has no idea how mobile phones work. Most people who have heard of this idea seem to think that they will be able to eat the de-extincted bird. I'm a meat eater and I like my poultry to be reasonably priced, you know, not so cheap that I can taste the cage, but not so expensive that I get my meal with a certificate of all the activities and coach trips it went on during its lifetime. $150 million for a roasted dodo is not only incredibly expensive, but because nobody's eaten one in 350 years, you really risk pairing it with the wrong wine. The lead scientist on this project is Dr. Beth Shapiro, and she said that bringing back the dodo could be a solution to the world's biodiversity crisis. One million species are threatened with extinction, but are still alive. However, they're spending $150 million on resurrecting something that's already dead. I mean, it is a solution, I'm just not sure if it's the right one. Like if somebody said to me, okay, you've got $150 million to spend on conserving animals, the first thing I would do is not build a zombie bird. I think I'd pick owls. I've always been a fan of hooters. Last year, Dr. Shapiro and her team successfully scooped up all the dusty old bits of dodo DNA that have been lying around in cupboards and museums, and they managed to sequence the entire dodo genome. A genome is the entire set of DNA instructions embedded in a cell. And genome editing is when you take a garden ornament and you change the colour of his hat. Dead things coming back to life is usually the stuff of nightmarish horrors like The Mummy or Drag Race All-Stars. But this is not going to be brought back to life through witchcraft or a zombie virus. Which is good, really, because you don't want some rotting dodo carcass sort of hobbling around petting zoos trying to peck the brains out of other birds. It's not really a child-friendly attraction. Although it would make a brilliant spin-off TV series. I think we have to be careful here to use the word de-extinct and 
cannot reanimate or resurrect. I think Jesus has kind of the the closed shop on resurrection. Do you think they could bring the dodo back and every Easter it lays chocolate eggs? You know, like Jesus does. Rather than take the Dr. Frankenstein method of stitching together old bits of dodo and zapping it with electricity, the team are going to take the genome of the dodo that they've sequenced, I'm not quite sure how that works, and they're going to take an egg and they're going to splice them together and then zap it with electricity. I mean, Mary Shelley clearly knew something. In my mind, colossal biosciences aren't actually bringing anything back. They're using dusty old DNA that they've kind of scooped out of the toenails of all the dodos that are currently stuffed on museums and mantelpieces, and they're mixing it with a fresh live egg. You've got to admit they're optimists. I wouldn't hold out much hope for my cooking if half the ingredients I was using were out of date. De-extincting a mammal is apparently different to de-extincting a bird. I mean, with a mammal, because of the birthing, you have to go through swollen feet, stretch marks, a huge period of complaining and backache, and then finally, when your little hybrid pops out, you get to see what you've made. I mean, one of my favorite films, Alien Resurrection, it took futuristic scientists eight goes before they made a working Ripley. I'm guessing Dr. Shapiro wants to avoid the consequences of having a lab full of hissing mutants. Although scientists have done this sort of thing before when they were cloning Dolly the sheep in 1996, nobody has ever actually done this with a bird egg. The team at Colossal Biosciences will certainly be winging it. So the lucky egg that's been chosen is the closest living relative to the dodo. The vulture. Ostrich. The pigeon. What? That's right, the team at Colossal are going to make a dodo pigeon hybrid. Perhaps they could call it a dojin or a pit pit pido? I'm just relieved it's not a peacock, because then you'd have a pedo. There are different types of pigeon. So instantly my mind was like, well, if there's different types of pigeon, you could have different types of dodos. You could have wood dodos, racing dodos, London dodos. I must admit, I like the idea of Trafalgar Square full of three foot tall dodos waddling around trying to steal tourist chips. The particular type of pigeon that is the dodo's closest relative is called the Nicobar pigeon. Now when you look at these two birds side by side, I personally don't see the family resemblance, but then again apparently I share a lot of DNA with a banana and a starfish. But please don't tell my parents I call them that. On one hand, you have the Nicobar, a beautiful rainbow-coloured pigeon, 40 centimetres tall, and the dodo. 100 centimetres, 110 in heels. And most importantly, the Nicobar is a frequent flyer, whereas the dodo prefers to take trains and sit in the direction of travel. There are so many differences between these two birds that presumably when you make a hybrid, you're waiting to see what comes out of the egg. And I'm guessing they're going to have to make lots of these hybrids so they can start to selectively breed them together so they start to bring out the dodo genes and breed out the Nicobar pigeon ones. I mean, maybe that's what happened in the first place. A lot of inbreeding would sort of explain some of the dodo's learning problems. This bird may literally feel like it's been born in the wrong body because it has. And it's not going to have an outlet to express that, like dyeing its hair green or making a TikTok about pronouns. I think it is a brand new species, although it's a combination of something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Also, what is quite strange is that the Nicobar itself is on the threatened species list. So you're taking an egg from a bird that's already threatened with extinction to edit it into making a bird that's already extinct. I don't really feel like you're giving it a leg up there, chaps. I think there could be some pitfalls reintroducing a historical creature. Swans have stayed up to date. They've made paddle boats, they've done ballets, they made friends with the queen. But even the swans find it hard to sometimes deal with the pace of human life. 
Hinkley Point C, a nuclear reactor which was built because it won't do any of those carbon emissions, is coming online and they built new power lines to get this green energy to the rest of the national grid. The power lines went over a swan flight path and five swans were exploded and decapitated. And these swans have grown up with people. This dodo has not been around for 350 years. It will have never seen a car. It's gonna probably end up getting itself trapped in a bin. The DNA that you're using is old DNA. What if it's not robust enough to deal with microorganisms and illnesses that have sprung up in the last 350 years? Currently, the UK is in the middle of an avian flu pandemic. So farmers have to keep all their chickens indoors. Makes meal times a little bit awkward. Like old software that can't handle new downloads, the new Dodo might be buggy. We don't know really what the dodo smelt like, we don't know what noise it made, we don't know what music it liked to listen to. We don't actually know for certain what happened to the dodo. We know that there were settlers on the island of Mauritius, we know that the dodo approached the settlers and was not scared of them. So I have a few theories. The dodo had no sex drive, like a panda. And the dodo, being quite stupid, found other dodos quite stupid. And it's all just very off-putting because you don't want to have sex with a stupid creature, but you're stupid, but everyone's stupid. The dodo's only method of self-defense was headbutting other creatures and yelling obscenities. The dodo had body odour. Its call was actually a screech. Ah, 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 and it could do bigger shits than a cow. Not only did it love to dive off cliffs into water, not knowing it couldn't swim, but it was also a chronic smoker and alcoholic. Before they tried to raise the dead, perhaps the team at Colossal should hold a seance and talk to the Dutch settlers who originally ate the dodo to extinction. Find out what the crack is. Like when you crack an egg. As a hybrid, this bird is the Prius of the animal kingdom. Slow, cumbersome, gets in the way and will probably end up smashed on the side of the road. I'm trying to think of uses for the dodo and so far I've come up with mobile cushion and loft insulation. Hanging over this idea like a repetitive parrot on a perch is the idea of could versus should. Just because you can edit the dodo into existence, should you play God and do this? Considering that the bird population of the world is decreasing, it's really great that Colossal Biosciences are focusing on trying to work out how to edit the genome of an existing egg. It'll be quite exciting, won't it? I'm sure once they've done the dodo, they'll move on to other species. One day you'll be able to walk into a science lab and it'll just be full of old cocks and tits. I would like them to splice together a horse and a rhino and a seagull. Basically, I want a flying unicorn. And it shits donuts! Colossal Biosciences say that they will be able to hatch their first dodo pigeon hybrid in six years. So we have plenty of time to lay the table and select our favourite sources. Thank you so much for watching my video. My name is Diane Spencer. Please have a look around my channel. If you like this video, like and subscribe and do follow me on my social media. Thank you to everyone who donated to me on the PayPal. I really appreciate it. Until I see you next time, have a lovely day. Goodbye. The team at Colossal also want to bring back the woolly mammoth. And one of the reasons they said was, oh, it'll help the uh, Arctic tundra because uh, the woolly mammoth will knock down trees so the grass will be able to grow. Mate, if there's one thing that human beings are very good at, it's knocking down trees. Don't need a giant saber-toothed elephant to do that for us. Pretty good at that.